Our first guest is one of our absolute favorites. He's an Oscar-winning actor and the author of the number one New York Times bestselling book, Green Lights. He has a brand new children's book called Just Because. We're going to talk to him about that. Please welcome Matthew McConaughey, everybody. Yes! Come on! Jimmy, 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 don't call me James. Matthew! What's happening? You are on the show tonight because I beg you to come on because I'm so into this book, and I know it's been out for, is it a year? Uh, almost two years now, I think. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. But I, I do love it, but I, I'm so into the book, and I loved it. I read everything. It is, it is uh, charming. It is funny. It is uh, personal. Uh, you get in there. You tell every single story. Uh, and I loved it, and 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 it's, it's actually made me think. It, it's it's just it's just so fun. And then my friend awesome. said, "Get the audio book, and you got to hear it. it's Matthew McConaughey talking and reading the book." I go, "This is going to be unbelievable," <laughs> and it is unbelievable. You are a fantastic storyteller. Were you? I have so many questions for you. But were you? First of all, were you reading the book when you did the audio? Book, or did you just remember from your head and go, "I know these stories"? No, no, no. I, I was reading from the book. Okay, go. I was reading from the book. But I had worked so long on the on the book and the stories that they told me that when I recorded the audio, they said, you're going to need maybe 10 days. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a long time. I mean, I know all these stories. And I hopped in the booth, and I think I knocked it out in eight and a half hours. So the total reads like 622, but um, I knocked it out in a day. Um, I kind of knew where the voices were, where the characters were, and I just... Yeah. Laid back and said, "Hey, if I'm sitting next to a campfire with a beer and with you hanging out. What stories? Are we <laughs> That's what it feels like. Yeah. And by the way, great Australian accent uh, in the book. Thank you. I like hearing you do accents. It's good. There's so many stories. I, I, I want you to just talk here for eight hours, but I'm gonna try to uh, get it down to my favorite parts. One that really stuck in my head is when you're in high school and you had your truck, and, yeah. and, and, and having that truck and what, 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 what did you? What, what, what was the tr truck? What, what did you drive? The, the, the truck was uh, a Dodge. It was only a, it was only like a four cylinder Dodge truck that was slightly lifted, good enough to go off road though. And I lived in East Texas, so after school, you know, girls and friends, we'd hop in my truck and go mudding. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was you threw everything in the back of the truck. You didn't care if you spilled something in it. I was a truck guy. It got muddy. You rolled. And, and you had a CB radio in it too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a CB, I had a speaker in the that I mounted in the grill. So I could pull up into the parking lot in the morning before school, and like a friend of mine, uh, this, this, this girl, Kathy Cook or something, I could get on my, get on my CB and like duck down and go, whoa, look at Kathy Cook this morning. She is looking. <laughs> you know, echo across the whole parking lot. Everybody, and she'd get embarrassed, wondering where it came from. And then I'd hop up. <laughs> and get busted, so it was, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. The truck was a lot of fun. Yeah, you're, you're a and rascal. Like, but I, yeah, fun rascal, yeah. fun rascal, man. Here's what I did. Here's where I snap food myself. There was a beautiful cherry red 300 ZX T tops that went on sale across town. Wow. And I drove by it and went in, and it was the guy said he would trade me the truck in for the 300 ZX, and I was like, ooh. Candy red, T tops, 300 ZX. How about that? Yeah. And I said yes. Big mistake. Instead of being the guy in the front parking lot, talking and having fun, being the rascal and going mudding after school, I started parking my 300 ZX off in the back third parking lot, away from all the cars, because I don't want anyone to open a door and dent it, right? And I started like leaning against my my red 300 ZX, like in my red 300 ZX, so cool. So therefore, I'm so cool. Well, I was no fun anymore. The I went dry, man. The girls didn't want to date me. My buddies quit wanting to hang out with me. Like, dude, you're like, you're, you're living off of this 300 ZX. You're no fun anymore, dude. And I went back to that dealer, pulled up and said, this was a bad life decision for me. Can I please have my truck back? I'll give you the 300 ZX back and some money if you want. He said, okay, I got the truck back. I was back in the front lawn, messing with Kathy Cook and going button after Yeah, four exactly. Months. Green light. Green light. Yeah. I, it's uh, I, I, I like uh, you, that you wrote down bumper stickers that you think that are clever and funny uh, throughout your life in a journal, and then you just now and then you go like, "Hey, here's a cool bumper sticker I saw," and you just talk about that. I like um, uh, the prescriptions. Prescribe. Yeah, man. Prescribe. Prescribe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here you say that. I'm telling you, I spent six and a half hours with you recently, and it's <laughs> amazing actually talking to you. It's it's almost bizarre. It's almost like uh, the metaverse. Uh, 
I, I like that you uh, uh, talk about your mom and your dad and uh, Rooster, who I love and has been on the show. I didn't know his name came from because he would just, it, no matter how par long everyone partied, he was the first one up. He was always up at sunrise, no matter if he partied till 5 a.m. Sun rose, Rooster's up. Yeah. Uh, talking about your, your dad and the way that they parented you, uh, I, I know one of the things is they want you to be honest. Uh, and one yeah. of the things is uh, they, they don't want you to get they don't want you get caught. So you, there's a couple yeah. of things where you, you stole a pizza once, and then your dad's like, I'm not even mad that you stole the pizza, but then you lied to me about it, and and you got caught. Don't <laughs> my boy doesn't get caught. Like son, <laughs> you're gonna try to get away with that and be that rascal and get away with that mischief. I don't give a damn about the stolen pizza, but you gotta get better at getting away with it, man. Yeah. And that's what I got to go. <laughs> and then. Then there's parts of it where you're laughing, then there's parts where it's just beautiful. But I, I think the treehouse one stuck in my brain, too, because y y you always just wanted a treehouse. I mean, I think every kid wants a treehouse if you have a yeah. backyard, if you're lucky enough to have one. That was my dream. You know, and as you know in that story, when you're a kid, I think a treehouse is a, is a sort of great metaphor example for all of our uh, dreams when you're a kid. It's a place to explore, you know, it's a place to go have some privacy, uh, some adventure. Uh, it's about freedom, yeah. it's about youth. And, and for me, that was my dream. And I happened to come across a lumber yard where I got some lumber and built a 13-story tree house that was, I don't know how damn tall, but it looked 100 feet tall to me when I was done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you would go up in the tree house and just look out. Well, I'd go, I remember I'd make my lunch in the morning and I'd take it to the base of the tree and I had this pulley with a bucket at the bottom and I put my lunch in. I could have easily carried my lunch up with me. But <laughs> yeah. then I put it in the bucket and I climb all the way to the 13th story and then just have such a good time seeing, look at this, I can use a pulley to bring my lunch all the way to the <laughs> good And I'd sit there by myself and overlook. It's the only place I could see all of Longview where I lived. And it's a place where I could see the horizon. And it's actually where I learned to even have more dreams than just a tree house. That was that was in the top on the top floor. Of that treehouse is where I learned to dream. I love that, and I I, I know isn't that amazing? I just thought. <laughs> Let's talk about this children's book, and then look at the look at the cover. It's the treehouse. Tree it's the treehouse. Stop it! Just stop it! It's the treehouse. It showed up again. Um, it's uh, not 13 stories. Um, but hey, I think again that iconic image speaks to the kid and all of us. You know, as I said, for me, it was a symbol of my youth, freedom, exploration, privacy, and it was my first big dream and where I learned to dream bigger at the top of my own tree house. So, yeah, it made it to the to the cover of Just Because, my new, my new children's book that I got, uh, got coming out. Look at you. Um, you're crushing it now. And I, I love it because it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's very green lights, but it's for kids, it's giving advice. Yeah. And this is, you know what it reminded me of? And what I didn't want to say, obviously, it's the best, but the giving tree almost, where it's like, uh -huh. it's like you know, you're reading these lines and you're like, oh, and it just hits you. And you, it's, it's, it's funny, it's great, it's smart, it's emotional, it's everything. Uh, and it's almost like a, like a this or that book, which is what I like yeah. with kids' books, because it's simple. Everyone can read it. Fathers can read it, mothers can read it, everyone can read it, and you get it and you go, like, just because I'm finished doesn't mean that I'm done. Like, I love that. That is a great line. Just because you got the gold doesn't mean that you have won. Yeah. Just because you wrote it doesn't mean that I read it. Oh. Just because I did it again doesn't mean I don't regret it. <laughs> Come, on. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. Things like that. You know? I, I could talk to you for eight hours. I love that you came back and did this for me. I appreciate this. Uh, I also want to talk to you quickly. I don't know if can we talk about other projects that you're doing, but there's one out there that uh, everyone's talking about. Are you playing Elvis? Yeah, Agent Elvis. Agent Elvis. I, Agent Elvis. Yes. Yeah, I get to voice uh, the global rock and roll icon, Elvis by day, who in Agent Elvis is an ass-kicking vigilante by night. <laughs> yeah. And I got a chimpanzee as my crime-fighting side. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. Blank. Why would you not do that? Only you can, come on, only you can pull that off. Uh, it's always great to see Something you, Mark. On Netflix. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, you coming on, and best of the family. And thank you, thank you so much for for this book and for this book. Uh, really, uh, kind of changed my life, pal. I appreciate it. Hey, Matthew thanks McConaughey, for, everybody. Thanks for sharing that with me. Look forward to it. Always a pleasure to be on with. You. Thank you, bud. Green lights, and just because.
Evangeline Lilly joins us after the break. Stick around, everybody. Come on back. Hey.